Hello, welcome to Joe's Dojo Villa Park. I'm Sensei Joe Garvey. Uh, I want to say it's Thursday. Uh, if you guys have any specific things you want to see, you just got to ask and I will go over them. If I don't know them, then I won't. But I'll look them up if that's something that I'm willing to do. Um, starting off, welcome. Thank you for showing up at the same time I did, uh, which means that you're going to be live with me. Uh, don't forget, I do like to look at your comments as you're doing them, so I will come on over, read them, say what's going on, and uh, continue. Uh, starting off, as usual, we should do warm-ups. Otherwise, you'll be cold. So, without further ado, arm circles. Oh, I'm sorry, kyotsuke, great, good, arm circles. Yeah, kyotsuke actually means feet together, and rei means bow. So when we do that, we are showing respect and honor. So everything in karate starts and ends with respect. That's why in almost every single karate class, you'll see I start with a bow in and a bow out, similar to most of the other martial arts out there too, like jujitsu and uh, all the other kung fus and other cool things. Um, very important. Now, a reminder on my my warm ups. You want to go from the top down just so you don't forget anything so when we're doing these i try to make them slightly repetitive so you can actually memorize them so it doesn't get confusing in the middle of them i'll usually try to switch something else out to make it a little bit new and interesting but we're just going to keep going forward with whatever we got so twist side to side where you put your feet matter so if you have it all the way in it'll actually twist lower half if you have it here, it'll work mostly the center core area. Let's go side to side. Again, this one, you're stressing that you're trying to have your hands on the side of your legs. If you go further than about your knee, you're probably doing a different stretch. So this is from here to here. Uh, hip circles. This one, I always make fun of because it's most people's least favorite just because it looks weird. But it's also very useful for the lower back, people that are sitting down a lot, or just people that want to have their back not hurting as much. And it's very simple, which simple is usually best. Good. Knee circles. Similar idea. You're not trying to go fast. You're not trying to go gigantic. You're just trying to go in a circle. However big you need them to be. Reverse. Another one, too, where you put your feet mattered. So if you put your feet directly together, you can do this. You have a lot smaller circles and they don't do as much, but it might get a different spot in your knee that you need to stretch. You go here. It's another one that it's hard to do a lot of. That's why I keep it right about in the middle. Next up, ankle and wrist. This is because they should not be missed. So when we're doing this, this actually gets hip, ankle, and you already did your knee, but it, it would get a little bit of that if you weren't doing it yet. Other side. I usually switch up my wrists so that it's a little bit different. The ankle and the hip should be about the same. Good. Then a little bonus on hands. Go ahead, stress and relax. That'll get your, your carpal tunnels and some of those other things that are needing work in. Then shita. Well, not really shita. Just a little bit lower. Put your arms on your knees and up and down. Yes, sir. Chi, knee, san, chi, go side to side. No, sir. Back and forth and back and forth. Not knowing which way to turn, just keep turning. Good. Now, small circle. You're not trying to rip your head off. You're trying to roll in the circle to get your body stretched. Other direction. Call these maybe, sir. Unless I happen to be a female teacher, then be maybe, ma'am. Good. I'll go ear to shoulder. This is a little different variation of the no, sir. So here. Now hands on your knees. Straighten them slowly. Try not to push your knees through. You just have your hands resting here because it's a good point. You can rest them on your feet too if you'd like to. You can rest them on your hips. You'll feel where you put your hands changes the stretch from hamstring to upper calf. The same thing here. You can have your feet down, then bend your knees. 
Now the bonus one, we're gonna push one knee out, push your shoulder forward, alternate them. Don't do it for super long, just kind of switch them around. Woo. And whoo. Good. We're on our feet still, so let's go knees in and out. We're probably going to be doing a, a fair amount of kicking today just because I feel we haven't covered a lot of the more uh, miscellaneous kicks. So we'll go over some of those. We're going to make it, I definitely want to go over our theories and our, how we do self-defense um, and how we practice. Then go outside, inside, outside, inside. If you have a whole bunch of crunching and clicking and all that kind of stuff, that means that you probably should do more stretching and also realize that you might be getting older like me. It's okay. As long as it doesn't hurt. If it hurts, then modify it so it doesn't hurt. So modify it so maybe it's that much. If it's fine, then wah, go big and big. Good. Those, those, those. Down to the ground. So, that's a habit. We try to do this in karate where we go, we karate chop down, and then we kneel, and then we rotate. So now our feet are in front. And reach. I always like to remind you the easiest way to stretch further is to do it on the exhale. Also is to take small incremental steps. Do not be going for all the way past trying to get your elbows to your foot or anything like that. Try to work on small incremental steps. One day to another, your flexibility can change up to about 20, 30%. So that just means that if you're well hydrated or if you had been doing a workout beforehand, there's a lot of different variation or different things that'll modify how flexible you can stretch. Long run is do it more. If you do it more, you have a better chance of growth, both to the middle. Now, some reason I don't love doing touch your toes. I like it more here because it kind of helps you keep your back straight. If you go here, there's a tendency to round out your back, which changes the stretch. You're, it'd be better to not even reach at all and try to touch your belly button to the ground. And then slowly work your hands forward if you want to, but I would also keep it kind of pressure so my lower half is trying to touch the ground instead of my upper top parts. It looks good, but it works good. Works better. That's a better way of doing it. Forgive my grammar. Most of the time I say it wrong because I think it sounds funny. Hands touching toes. I'm more of a math nerd than a grammar nerd. This I like to say is my least favorite stretch just because I've never enjoyed the feeling of a hamstring stretch right here. But I'm good at it. So that reminds me people, you don't have to like everything you're good at. You might have to do it still, but just because I'm good at doing butterflies doesn't mean that I enjoy the stretch more than another one. I like right leg splits more than left leg because it doesn't hurt as much. That's a good reason. It also would be said that center splits is less enjoyable than right leg splits because my right leg splits is better. So if I'm better at it, it might make it easier and it might make me like it more. But then, just because I can do this, doesn't mean I enjoy it. This thing, put one foot up and lean it back. Give it a little bit of a hug. Say nice things to it. Say like, hey, if you try to kick me, I hit you back. Ah. Now, if you notice, that's actually my bad foot and I still got to touch. Now, the good foot, when I go here, it has a lot easier time just resting. Another way you can improve your stretching too is you do, I can't remember what it's called, but the opposite pressure. So say I'm trying to get this to go towards my head. One way of getting it better is I pressure the joint or I push the muscles out and I give it lots of resistance, lots of resistance and I relax and I let it come in. And I push out, push out, push out, push out, push out, push out, and then relax. And it comes in a little closer. And one more time, just to prove the point, uh, push, 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 and relax. Now that's a little ballistic, but it has some effect. Another way of doing more flexing or more stretching is do the same thing again. 
So now I'm here, it's already able to touch and hold because I already warmed up a little bit. If you notice too, I'm not doing anything fast, but if I go here, push, 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 relax. Relax is important. Push, 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 relax. Push, 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 relax. Got it. Well, that's good enough for that for the day. Let's go ahead to our sit-ups, push-ups, and, and our uh, squats. So, ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, Q, Ju. Now, how you count the t past 10 is you say 10 1, 10 2, 10 3. So, 10 4, 10 4, good buddy. Ju Go, Ju Roku, so 10 6, Ju Shichi, Ju Hachi, Ju Q, Need You. Then it goes 2 10 1, then 2 10 2. So, need you san, need you shi, need you go, need you roku, need you shichi, need you hachi, need you q, then three times of sanju. It's a firm theory of mine that one of the reasons why some of the Asian countries seem to be better at math than us is because. That math makes more sense. So a lot easier to say 10, 1, 10, 2, 10, 3, 2, 10, 1, 2, 10, 2. I know, because I'm teaching a five-year-old at home. Then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Those last five make sense. All right. And even teen, that's just 10 with an extra E in it. Not so bad. Let's go ahead and push up and push down and push up and push down and repeat until we get desired results. So... Ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, kyu, chu, ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, kyu, chu, ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, kyu, chu. <sighs> Yeah, 30. All right, and down and up. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. I'm gonna make this a little more interesting. Ah. Come here, Jerry. Here we go, let's get Jeremy. So, go here, pick up, readjust. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, kyu, ju, juichi, juni, ju san, ju shi, ju go, ju roku. Ju shichi, ju hachi, ju kyu, need you. Oh no, ten more? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And fling. Jerry's oh, kind of heavy. About 100, I think. Ah. The upper epons and Taikyoku. Good. Good, good, good. I'm here, Jerry. Oh, I'll just. I might utilize him a little bit more, too. Oh. But if you're lucky, you got somebody who practice it with at home. I have to practice on this dummy. Whew. Oh, leg swings, I think. Jerry, hold my leg. Thanks. 
<sighs> Ichi, ni. Guys, cheating. Ichi, ni. San, shi. Oops. Go. Raku, shichi, hachi, q, ju, switch, ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, q, ju, sideways, ichi, me, hot turn foot. San, shi, go. Roku, shichi, hachi, kyu, ju, ichi. Me, that's the other leg if you couldn't tell. San, shi, go. Roku, shichi, hachi. Q, Ju, Ichi, oops, sorry. Ni, San, Shi, Go, Roku, Shichi, Hachi, Q, Ju, Ichi. Ni, other leg. San, Shi, Go. Roku, Shichi, Hachi, Q, Ju, Ichi, Ni, San, Shi, Go, Roku, Shichi, Hachi, Q, Ju, Ju Ichi, Ju Ni, Ju San, Ju Shi, Ju Go, Ju Roku, Ju Shichi, Ju Hachi, Ju Q, Ni Ju, Ni Ju Ichi, Ni San, Shi, Go, Roku, Shichi, Hachi, Q, Sanju, Ichi, Mi, San, Shi, Go, Roku, Shichi, Hachi, Q, Yonju, Ichi, Mi, San, Shi, Go, Roku, Shichi, Hachi, Q, Goju. Thanks, Jerry. Well, let's check out our other comment really quick. So, hey, Donna, so much. Good. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. Oh, sorry, Jerry, you're in my way. Trying to upstage me? Technically, he was downstage, but we don't want to talk about that. All right, warm ups complete. Fixed keys, Nobi. Looking good. Upper Epons, cool. Taikyokus, cool. A little bit of circulars, mmm. -hmm. A lot of people are having a lot of hard times with the advanced circulars. Figure we might as well work on some of that too. So, I'm gonna start with that, because we already got a partner here. So, neat thing about this guy is he's got arms. The other neat thing is he has three legs, so he's a cheater. He's using 50% more leg power. But, he doesn't get hurt when I sleep him. So if I go here, and boom, he just falls over. I'm more likely to get hurt than him when I sweep him. So don't feel too bad about Jerry over here. So, what do we got? Circulars. Some important stuff about how we do our self-defense in this dojo. Our goal is to teach you how to defend yourself against whatever's out there. And it's usually not going to be friendly. And they're probably not going to get ready to punch you to hit you. If they do, you should probably talk them out of it because they're not very good at fighting and you could probably beat them without having to hit them. Now, if a person's here and they wham, and they come in and just sucker punch you, those are the people I'm most worried about, so that's what we use to train against. We also teach the art of the sucker punch, which is one of the better things about a sucker punch is it hand first, body follows. Don't worry too much about damage. The most important thing is you get them stunned and stopped. So if you have your hands up and you wham, just wail them in the nose, that might have ended the fight before it even started. Because they were, they didn't think it was going to happen. They're getting ready to hit you, and you got them first. Which isn't very nice. But if you're afraid for your life, and somebody's bigger than you and is about ready to attack you, you might have to take the preemptive defense. But next thing is we like to be an arm's length plus six inches away. 
That's what we consider like black belt level. If you're closer than that, hand is quicker than the eye, they can just get you without you having a chance to react. If you're further away from that, they now have momentum. So from here, wow, it's really hard to stop a moving train. So if they get you first, they're gonna crumple you. If they don't get you and you backpedal, you're gonna walk into something, bump into something, and be in the wrong situation. So your goal, have yourself in a nonchalant, nice, happy, nice way of looking. And as they make the first move, you move too. You always want to move. Good way to get hit is by standing still. Then you get hit still. So if I stand still, ugh. sorry, Jeremy, you got to boom. Gives me a good example here. Now, if I move and he punches or she punches, boom. Even if I run right into the punch, they now have your elbow joint locked in and they're jammed, so it doesn't hurt as much. They punch, I move backward, they expect you to be where you are. It's like they have a script that they're following and you're not part of their act. If they punch here and you move off to the side, they're now standing off center and you get to punch them on the side. Either one of the sides. Even moving up is an option. Boom. Where you go up and they get their arm misdirected, then you misdirect their arm pretty nice, then there are some times when you actually will just stand there and get hit. I often do it to people that aren't worth fighting. I hate to say this, but I have a lot of young students and they sometimes try to hit me and I just stand there, <sighs> that's it? That's a mental fight. It's very little physical when a, when a 10 year old gets in it like, oh, get that sensei, oh, I got you. Not much to worry about on that. Unless they hit you in a sensitive spot, which I'm this tall, and they're this tall, so I'm gonna see that part coming, and I have a cup on. I'm in karate mode, I have that protection. So, arms length and a half, uh, hands, sensory located, ready to go. If you're smart about it, you talk with your hands, so you just gotta, hey, it's all right, I don't know why you're looking so aggressive, it's not a great day today, I know it's a little gloomy out, but I was just, oh, bam! And you just kinda blow up on them. So, intensity. We like to train with intensity. If you notice, I'm already sweating, and all I've done is warmed up. So, even my warm-ups, I try to train intense. That's why I'm counting out loud, even though I can't hear myself, you know? It's important. So, boom! I like to have my explosion happen from right where I am. I don't want to wait to the second, third, fourth move, because what if my plan failed, and all of a sudden they're on top of me? No, I only have one chance to get the first move on. So you want to explode off the starting point. So, you also want to be looking right about center of chest. That way you can see the shoulders, you can see the head, you can see the hips. You might not be able to see the toes, but if you're standing this far away and they start picking up a toe, their hips are moving too. If they're that sneaky where they just long leg in here, you could probably just move your body a little bit and it wouldn't be much of a damage. Okay, circular number one. So facing you first, side step, push, chop, Grab, punch, ridge hand punch, tate. So, on this person. Alright, round block. Alright, seiken, toko, tate. So, step out. One, two, three. Number two. You're gonna step back and push down. So, they're coming in with a punch. You grab, you hit to the eyes, kick them in the groin elbow up their head. So one and two and is what I call it. Whoop, 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 whoop. Number three, they punch here still, you jam up and kick them in the groin. So you go boom, then their arm is now here, so you go here, swing it down, kick them in the face, hit them in the back of the neck. Whoop, whoop. So you go one and two and. A lot of ands, it's kind of like good music. They have the in-between beats. Number four, are we already do number three? Yeah, three. Whoosh. Number four, they'll punch and they'll step in. You're gonna run block to the inside, grab, punch to the eyes, punch to the throat, smash to the ear. With that ear, you're trying to cup the ear and make sure it pops the eardrums and they can't hear you saying he shouldn't have done that. So you go here, run block, Eyes, throat, ear. If you notice, the ear's got a nice pop to it. That's a good idea. 
Number five, I'm going through these at a decent speed because I want to do some of the other things that you just asked me to do. I just wanted to get these in and out. So 30 seconds per each one is all I'm giving it. Number five, you're gonna step off to the side. This foot's gonna come up, bam, kick to the groin, smash the ear, thumb punch the eyeball, break the arm. So again, we're off step, whoosh, smash the ear, punch the eye, break the arm. Even Jerry didn't like that. He's a little wobbly now. If you notice me readjusting his feet, it's because I don't have to pick them up each time. That's a lot of work. You already saw me do 30 squats with them. He's heavy. Get in there. So, number six, same as number four, except for you go inside, and you turn ear, like the last move, uppercut to the throat, then uppercut to the groin with the open hand. So, you know, round block, ear, Throat, groin. He's not even wearing a cup. He's not prepared. Okay, number seven. Number seven, we like to call the pizza guy. I'm gonna do it backwards for you guys so it makes it look easier. So you're gonna go forearm block. It's actually the back foot's the one that moves on this one. So the back foot forearm blocks. It's like a matador. They slide past, and you feed them your fist. So you go. Forearm block back fist, and you scoop their arm out of the way as you feed them a shote and kick them in the stomach or in the groin, whichever is easier. So, as they're punching, you go forearm block back fist, scoop, feed them a slice of pizza, slam the door shut. All right, sorry, Jerry. Not really sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. Seems like a famous thing. Okay, number eight. The hardest one in some ways, because it's actually you go forward. Most of the other ones you go off on a tangent line, that's okay. You go grab, you're going right for the shoulders, knee, elbow, kate. Don't go anywhere, Jerry, I still got you. So you're going grab, here and here, knee, elbow, tate. Some people call it the Taibo knee. Good. Next up, the advanced. One of the differences between the advanced and the regulars is that they're done afterwards. Ha! What I mean to say is, they're always a direct punch to the face. When we do circulars, a lot of times we hit right here. Because when you're first learning and you're like white through blue belt, you're not all that prepared for somebody smashing you right in the face because you weren't thinking fast enough and you're a little bit slow on the, on the get-go. So, it's bad form to break everybody's nose that walk into the dojo. So, or the people that are practicing at home. Because if they're being nice enough to be the person punching and you're working your technique, don't break them. Make it so you could work with them longer. So, number one advance, bam, you high block as you eye gouge. So, high block and eye gouge as you step in. There's like three forward movements. So, bam, and then you pull back, a double eye gouge, pull back, collapse the lung, kick to the groin. Let me double check. I think I got three comments I haven't seen yet. Uh, watching, watching, watching. Good, good. I like all these people. So, like I was saying, you go jam. So you're going inside of their area. You can do it here, here, I have no preference. Double eye, double collapse the lung right here. Bam, kick them in the groin on the way back, hands up. Number two, advance. So, if that wasn't weird to step forward, now you're gonna step forward with the opposite leg, high block to the right. So, you're gonna go here, you're gonna swing your arm, unswing your arm, break their arm. Because it's not very nice that I'm gonna punch you, so you take away their weapons. It's like uh, putting this arm on timeout, cranking it down. So they punch the head, you high block, you swing the arm, swing the arm back, and then bam. This is the breaking motion. So their arms over here, you pull down, you turn their wrist palm up, and they go bam, and their elbow goes, ow, I'm not supposed to bend that way. Makes sense. Not supposed to bend that way, that's how things break. An important thing is when you're working with partners, stop early. Don't say sorry, don't do it wrong. If you said sorry, it's because, hey, I stopped too early and it didn't look like a good technique. They're like, oh yeah, you can pull down a little more. When I have my arm moved, I'll keep it bent, so the worst thing they do is straighten it. If you have it straight and they bend it, it'll bend the wrong way. Who else we got? Oh, two comments. We finally got them. Ah, the whole family. All family. Good, good. I see though. The crystals and the Leos and the boys. So, 
self-defense, advanced self-defense, number three. Number three, this is where it goes back to almost more regular. So you go forearm block, so they punch it straight. Forearm block, back fist, sake into the groin, mwashi to the head, tapped into the body, kick to the groin. Hands up when you're done. So, meiru uki, rikinzuki, seikinzuki, mwashizuki, tatezuki, kick. I call it the equal opportunity destroyer because it gets everything you need. Number four, the first of the cool sweeps. Hey, Jerry, you ready for this one? So, you're gonna sidestep with a round block. Grab, kick the stomach or the groin if that's where you get. Round block kick, shoot on the back of their neck. I'm really trying to get into the sweep already. Shoot on the back of the neck, wham! So, round block, kick, shoot at the same time as you sweep. Then, bam, bam, you hit them where they are. If you're working with a partner, you stop early. You do the sweep, by the way. It's good policy to practice your sweeps, especially on people that aren't your same size because then you get better at it. Make sure they don't have any knee problems or any leg problems before you start sweeping your, your family. But it's very useful. You're going behind the head, kind of right there on the notch, at the same time as you're kicking the shin, and then two parts separate. Where the head goes, the body follows, and you keep the leg from going with it. So it's very simple to just chop and push, pull, and just, hey, bye. Now, you can do that with a partner, too. You can have them go slowly and controllably. Bam, bam. Ah, oh, Jerry's leg was in the wrong direction. Good job. Good job. Good work. Number five. One of my favorites. So, person's coming up. They're punching you twice because they have two hands. They figured out they should use them both. You're going to go, shoot a hooky, shoot a hooky. Your goal is to chop them, but it's going one, two, or one, two. Because that's what they're doing. They're punching you off center or off off timing, they're going bam, bam. You go, nope, nope. And then drop it on them here and here. So again, right in the collarbones, there's a double destruction on that. So you go, shooto one, shooto two, murate shooto. You pull back in, elbow, shote. So elbow, the solar plexus here, shote the, the jaw and the nose right in the center part. So you're gonna go here, one, two, Double, then elbow, show tip. No need for kicking because they already got the guy beat up. So one, two, three, four, five. High five the face. Number five's got a high five. That's a good idea. When Ken Newton made that up, that's a good idea. Good. Next up, number six, show tay city. So it's a lot of show tay action. So you're going to go block. So the hand's here. Block, smash the nose. Smash the jaw, smash the other side of the jaw, smash the ribs, smash the other ribs, kick to the groin. So, shote, 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 shote. Ah! Bang. So, when you're hitting that, you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, I'm trying not to knock over Jerry because it takes me like a minute if I have to pick him back up again. Sorry. Okay, number seven. They're starting to get cool again. So, seven is the one where you go forearm block, then reverse forearm block with a surprise sucker punch, reverse punch. So they punch one, block. They punch two, block. And you're going to go elbow. Oh, sorry. One, two, uh, forearm, or four, tattoo sorry. Hammer, hammer, tate. So again, forearm block, reverse forearm block. Hammer fist, hammer fist, tate, step back without kicking for some reason. So you go one, two, three, four, five. And by that I mean seven. Good. Number eight. Got two more sweeps coming up. Let's move this back that much more. You can see him dance. So, number eight is really cool because it actually has a, an attack and a block at the same time. Which is a really good idea to attack at the same time as you're blocking because... Then you're hurting them, and they can't have as much opportunity and momentum smash you. So you go, bam! So you go, high block, groin punch. Raise the hand, uh, ajirikin. So ajiuki is an up punch, so we call ajirikin because it's a back fist. Bam! 
And Sensei Steve says, hopefully their tongue is sticking out. Because you hit them here, you hit them here, and they go, ah! Ugh! And they bite off your tongue. So you go, punch, raise up, back with the nose, hook punch the head. That little hook punch is a little sneaky little way of just moving their body enough to make it so you can sweep them really good. So you go, one, two, three, four, and you just kind of grab into the shoulder and hip sweep them backward. So you go, one, Go high block, but I'm jamming them a little bit. Raise it up, back fist them, hook punch them, and then bam, bam, bam. Wherever they land is where you beat them up. We usually just practice Zen Kusadachi with the two tates down. Hey there, don't dance out of my way. I'm not done with you yet. Number nine. Pretty awesome one, number nine. It's round, 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 I get around from the Beach Boys. To, I'm not allowed to say that because, you know, that's threatening it. But... That's what Sensei Larry said it, so I just copied what he said. You're gonna go round block. So, round block out to the side, round kick, round punch, round punch. What, why would you ever do this? Because then you go like that, and they fall. So you go round block, round kick, punch, punch, and you're gonna go here, and bam. That's one of the coolest parts too, because you actually stomp down. Whoosh. If you have their arms, still keep it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Stop. My fuma coming right on top of you. My foot is coming to you on the ground. I will meet you there. Number 10. Kind of easy comparatively, but weird. Let me back up so you can see my foot works. How my foot works. You know, step, hook. Also, backhand block. So your haishuuki. Uh, Suryuto, so your ox jaw, bam, turn behind them to Tui, to their kidneys, I think, and Shuto, the back. So, this one is kind of the neat one because all those other ones are all about moving these angles. I'm trying to get behind them on this one. That's a lot of work to get behind somebody. So you're going one, and, two, and. When you hit somebody in the spine, that severs things, so they stop working from that part down. So you go hook or haishuuki with a cross step, shote, step one, tatui, rotate, punch to the back. Remember, stop early on this if you're working with a partner because when you start severing parts in their back, you'll never work with them again. You'll probably be kicked out because it's really, really rude to break people. All right, Jerry, you've done your purpose. So I must ask you, Move! Hoya! The throwing bag. That's what they're there for. Let's take a look at what everybody else said. Hey, Sensei Steve's watching. Seven is also similar to. Yeah, uh, that's why I got it messed up, <laughs> Sensei. Is every once in a while you do uh, number seven, you're know, like, wait a minute, is that the elbow one or is that the one that actually has the four? Ah, I got messed up. Okay, small drink. Good drink. <laughs> so, I want to say Macy's the only one that's asked for anything, so she gets something. Let's start with those epons as you said. You said advanced ones, so that means 6 through 10. It doesn't mean uh, 11 through 26. Those are really advanced. I only know up to number 15. I've done 16 once, and I've seen a couple more on a video. They're pretty crazy. I think number 23 has you step behind the person, shoot them on the top of their head. Pretty awesome, especially when you see the like 65 year old martial artist doing it to the 45 year old guy. He's like, hey, guy, come here, I need an example. He's like, oh, God, climbs up, wham! Which also happened to Senpai Chris in the last tournament by Sensei Steve's young, or youngest son, Chad. He got punched down, and Chris is bigger than him, so that was really impressive to see Chad go, Wah! all right, Chris still remembers, don't worry. All right, so, Epons, number six, seven, eight, nine, ten is as follows so start stepping back cover up lock number six you're going to step forward on this 45 degree angle with your hand locked here so you're going to grab onto them after you block so you go high block grab shift shooto bicep as you pull them in shooto neck twist punch low block again step back High block, shift, so that's a lot of movement there. So I'm pulling, 
chopping and stepping at the same time. So I'm going one, two, three, four, five. Good. A little bit faster. Block. Good. Number seven comes after six, I believe. So similar exact idea. Difference is instead of just stepping forward in this 45, you're going to go all the way 90 degree angle. In other words, a triangle angle, if people don't like math yet. You're going to go to here. But you're not going to let them go in the middle. So you're going to go here, block, grab, bam! You're going to go shin, or knee break, shin stomp, crunch. It's a special order, like extra anchovies. You go block, grab, smash! What? Smash! A lot of times this looks kind of like a pounce. Boom! Twist, punch, punch, block, slow motion. Lock. The only easy part, grab. Good, regular speed, block. You notice my hand's all gnarly out there because I there's nobody to grab, so I'm just grabbing the air. Number eight, because that makes sense. You're gonna step back, Jodanuki. Well, that's easy. Now, number eight is like all the moves right away. So you go from blocking to sweeping, elbowing, pulling, pushing, smash. What? Yeah, so wham, punch, punch, block. Okay, that's a lot of movement. So you're gonna go one, two, I like to think about this, kicking behind their foot, three, boom, punch, punch. Readjust, block, up, easy? Not really, but it'll work. Block, wow! Now that's kind of funny because I did Seikens and I did Tates. Doesn't matter, just hit them. When in doubt, hit them again. Hit it until it stops. One of their other keys to self defense is we stop when they do. So if I had to punch them three times, I'd say, oh, stop, please. Great. Well, then I had to punch three times that day. Now, in the, in the heat of things, we're probably going to hit them seven times. But afterwards, we could readjust. We could grab onto their shoulder. We'd keep them away from us and say, hey, knock it off. I meant what I did because you did something bad. Okay, good point. Number nine. That one. So you're going to farm block at the same time as you're stepping similar to number seven end point, except where it's a hachidachi instead of a little bit of a kibodachi. But you're doing that quarter turn. You're like, oh, I'm at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, one of those things. So you go here, farm block, second half turn. So if you notice, it's going one, two, but you have to do it part by part. So you had to go farm block. Oh, what? I can't see you anymore. Sensei, I'm still here. Don't worry. You grab on, and you go look over the second arm. So this arm did the forearm lock. It wrapped him up. This arm is going to punch him in the groin, break their ribs. Now, here's the hardest move. You have to go back where you started. Step, step. Now, where do I punch, Sensei? No, you wouldn't punch this one because you just stepped back with that one. So stepping back and punching is subtractive art. That's not a great idea. It could happen, but... If I go here, that's a lot of work. If I go here, that actually has a little bit of push, push, push. It's useful. So, from here, I already punch this guy. Punch him once, punch him twice, step, step. Oh, there's power again. Punch, low block, hachi dachi. One more time, because when you get turned around, it's hard to see. So, I'll do one more half turn. We can look closer. We go, farm block. Grabby turn, punch groin, break ribs, step, step, seiken, gyaku, geranuki. Cool. Now, number 10, everybody's favorite. You go, hey, how you doing? Hand, hands you doing? So your hand's up here, but you don't just put it up there. You're like, you don't just smile at it. You go, woo! Now, if you're really good, I'm going to give you a little more space to see this. I go, I'm a nice, nice, normal, happy, talking, talking, talking. Whoa! Boom! 
the idea is to sell this. If you don't sell it, it won't work. You go, ah, bam! Now what this does is you already punch them in the groin. You wham! And you drop your weight. Boom! Saken, saken. You're making me crazy. Good. Again. So you go, ham! Or you say whatever. That's it. Now I'm number one, through, or what was it? Six through ten. Let me see if I have any good comments left. Good, good. Still there, still there, still all happy. So, ah, uh, I got asked for the Taikyokus. That's good, I know those. But I got asked for like Nahanti Part San, I'd be like, I got a review. I gotta, I gotta do more work. I don't know, very good. So, we'll just do the easy stuff that's good at everything. Now, the important part to focus on when you're doing Basic katas is you basically gotta look awesome. If you look lame and you're doing it lame, you might as well not be doing it. So you gotta force your body into doing it a little bit tougher and do it a little bit better. So, Taikyoku Ichi, number one. Some people call it Taikyoku Shodan. It's still correct. It's either first exercise form or exercise form number one. It's still the same thing. Sometimes they twist different. Taikyoku Ichi! Furudachi, Hachidachi, ready. And, ha! Ah! Rub the gate on. Spot left, middle, right, back to the left. You're gonna step in, get on Uki. So I stepped in and I stepped back. That's a good idea. Step forward, punch. This might answer your question. Look around. He is a family of Teleos fishing. Computer, cancel! Sorry, my, my machine's talking back to me. Swap behind, turn around, low block, punch. Back in the middle, low block, punch. One, always work on your stance before the punch, by the way. Two, it should land at about the same time, but your legs should be just a hair faster. Three, whoo! Spot to the right, we step forward here, low block, step forward, punch, whoosh! Look behind, turn around, low block, and punch! Back to the beginning, you go back and forward. And by forward, I mean backwards for some reason. Low block. One, two, ha! Spot right, step through, block, punch. Look behind, turn around, low block, and punch. Spot, pose. See how I'm fixing my body parts? Because I'm not perfect either. And then together. Cries my secret, I bear no weapons, I pray never to use this. And right. Double check, I think somebody said hi. Anybody? Anybody? Nope, that's same sensei Steve's thing. Alright, good. So, Taikyoku ni, Taikyoku san. Same thing. Add a different move. So I'm gonna do a little challenge here. I'm gonna do the same exact format, same exact different directions at the different times. We're gonna mess with it. I'm gonna do a different block. And a different punch each time. Uh, it's just kind of more exciting to me. Goal of the Taikyoku is to make Gaki say easier for me. That's as a teacher, I set that up in that way. But it's still useful to get extra practice in. So, Kyotsuke, Taikyoku Juju Undo. Purachi Hachidachi Rei. Exercise form number made up. Pause! Spot, 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 spot. Block, punch, spot, middle block, heavy, spot, high block, and forearm punch, single finger punch, uh, chicken head punch, spot, round block, step forward, elbow, spot, push block, step forward, Nishikin, spot, Let's do X block low. Step forward. Let's do Tiger Maw, Kokozuki, and Shutozuki. Ah! Spot. Let's go Jujuki high and Murote Nuki tape. Boom. Spot. Murote Nuki is the augmented middle block, position three. Good. And then. Uh, I can't remember what that one's called. Shaken. We'll just do that. Let's step forward. 
Rote Chudariki. I didn't forget. Cross my secret, I bear no weapons, I pray not have to use this, I ask for in peace, and pray. Good. Good. So, that's a way of changing your stuff to make it a little bit more exciting for somebody. Mostly me. Alright, Sensei Dave's watching too. We are practicing Impy Show. Oh yeah, sure. Impy Show, I'll show you Impy Show Show. For show, Impy Show. Good. Impy Show, first elbow form. That's a good one. So, Kutsuke, Impy Show Kata. I'm gonna pull. Tei uki. So hand block. Tei katana uki. Somebody's grabbing on your hands, you get away from them. You go, no, no! Those are mine. Step out. Ose uki. Okinawa te. That's an Okinawa te. Keep doing that. Let's do that as a onikin. Bam! Okinawa te is here. Onikin. Step forward. Kogeki in out. Geranuki. Twist. Gyakuzuki. Kick, boom! Step in, Marate Uki, augment middle block. So this is augment number two, augment number one. High, middle, low, middle, good. Step backward and diagonal, like diagonally in the Harry Potter. Punch in the groin. Reverse in Kuzaj, it should look like a Zen, just facing the way that you don't think about. And if you stop looking, they'll move to you, wham! Spot, block. Notice how I bend this right knee back out. I want it to be a soshinachi. Low block, then twist back into your zenkusenachi. Make it call me so you're going boom! Step, step, and ah! back to the beginning-ish. So you go here, soshinachi geranuki, crane on up, bring it open, elbow, super elbow! Ah! Now you're going to take both hands, face away from the camera. This is a take a ton of uki, but you don't touch technically. So left hand chamber, right hand on top, floating with a knife. Spot. Rote shuto uki. Downward. Rote shuto uki. Sideways. Rote shuto uki. Sideways. You notice, I'm going, I'm going soshindachi. Ah, I did it wrong. Soshindachi. Soshinachi, Kibadachi. So my body's facing that way. Spot, low block, reverse. Make a call me, step, ha! Back to the middle. Koko uki, osuyuki. So block, trap, strike. Now I usually show it to a green belt this way where I go flowy. Or I go one, two, three. It should be a huzz. So, when you're learning it, it's okay to break it down. So, if I were to go here, the punch it in the orange spot, stance first, blocking, or blocking. The key is grabbing them. As you grab, you get this one ready to stab. Step forward, grabbing, stabbing. Grabbing, stab. Whoosh. Bring it back, forward. Now this should be a little bit of a diagonal. Eyes, throat, kind of tight. It should be. Jump, spin, you're going counterclockwise. That means not how clocks go, how unclocks go. Rote shuto, step back. Same person, rote shuto. Now, I haven't figured out how to land in the exact spot so my kata ends correctly. Moving on, so I double shoot those. Rotate gate on. Hose! Cry is my secret. I bear no weapons. I pray never have to use this. Ready. Hachi dachi. Good. There's your MP show. For show. Let me see what else you guys had to say about MP show. Good. Everyone watching can make requests, but realize there is only so much time. Good. I think I'm going to keep that habit until you guys yell at me for it, because I, I actually like talking. And my hands are talking to the thing, and we all we all bring in Mr. Squeaks over here. They're like, all right, let's greet everybody's comments, everybody. Let's go ahead and so so the Dave said everybody watching can make a uh, request, but realize that there's only so much time. Good. Now, or Crystal said, ah, uh, 
Yeah, we can practice empty show. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, Squeeze. Get out of here. All right. That's actually about the perfect timing for it. So um, uh, I want to say again, thank you for joining us. Uh, us being me today, but thank you for joining the dojo. Uh, I know it's looking like the dojo will be closed in April. If that, if that affects you guys and you, you can't afford to contribute to the dojo, email me. Let me know. We could pause. We could cancel. We could burpee. Whatever you need to do. But um, I'm going to teach this. I'm going to keep teaching here. If I get forced that we can't leave our house, I'll be teaching inside my house. If that's the need, if that's the want, I will continue teaching as long as I can. If they start going into my house and say, hey, you can't teach, well, they're probably going to have to fight me. That's it's home invasion. You can't do that. Okay, so I can I can post all I want in my own house. I can post right now at my dojo because I own the place, and I can do what I want. You guys seem to like it, so I'm going to keep doing. Um, side note two is Saturday I will be posting some of the extra instructional videos that I've been recording before and after these practices. So expect I think green and purple belt to show up on Facebook magically. I already recorded it, so now I just got to show it. Uh, the extra side note on that is, uh, I plan on doing more of that. I still haven't done brown belt curriculum. That's going to be hard. And I'll have to then start breaking up like chunk at a time. So I'll do a recording of one kata here, watch it over and over again, but I'll do it. I'll be like, here's kata done. Here's kata done slow. Here's kata done with every Japanese word. Here's kata done without Japanese words. So it'll probably take 15 minutes for kata, which is really good for practice. Now, I always like to say... This is karate. It's for review when you're watching on video. It's very hard to learn new things, but try anyways. Just because something's hard doesn't mean you're going to not try it. You're going to go for it as much as you can. If you think number 10's hard or number 11's hard or number 35's hard, just work on it. All we're doing is trying to improve ourselves. So the difference between doing something and nothing is astronom astronomical. As, as you know, X approaches infinity, it seems like it's a nothing. But it's still a positive number versus nothing. And sometimes you just got to remember to be a little bit positive. Be the light for other people to see. Be a good influence on your people around you. Go outside and make chalk art so somebody get excited that somebody wrote chalk art. I mean, do something fun. Uh, thank you again. Kyotsuke and Ray. All right. And Sensei Steve says goodbye for now. I'll see you again soon. <laughs>